So what we do is we interconnect solo home systems and we enable energy sharing between them, which is basically trading. And the customer chooses when they want to trade and when they don't. Instead of building large grids, we're proposing a decentralized structure where we start building grids bottom up. The setup is quite simple. Any home that has solar panels and a battery can buy this special box, which connects them to another house with the same setup. The box allows the buying or selling of energy between the homes. But it gets better. There is still a segment of the population that still can't afford to buy a solar home system. So instead of doing that, if they can just buy a small soul box, they can just buy energy when they need it. You fill up your soul box with money. As you keep using energy, it deducts money. What this means is that all the boxes can connect to each other to form a microgrid. It's like a water tank of community energy that people can give to or take from. The beauty is that this microgrid can then connect to the adjacent village's microgrid and the network becomes stronger and stronger. There's a mimicking of nature here, isn't there? Like in the way that cells multiply and form something and strengthen. Yeah, yeah it's... That's, that's a great analogy. You have one solo home system, you interconnect with your neighbours, you make it 50. Slowly you interconnect villages. Once you've collected 100 villages, you can hook it up to the grid. You can sell to the grid, forget buying from it. You become the primary energy generation source for the country. So the idea is we are like a swarm of bees or a swarm of fish that move together, pool in all our energies together to run bigger loads. What struck me about the microgrids is that the profits from the shared energy stay within the community and empower individuals rather than going to a big energy company elsewhere. But it turns out microgrids are currently illegal in some countries. If we recognise that our well-being fundamentally depends upon the stability and the thriving of this planet, we would put that at the heart of the economic system we create. I met with the economist Kate Rayworth in an appropriate location. Kate is proposing a new economic framework designed for our current predicament. Today's economy, the returns of production are accruing to a 1%, which leaves us with these extraordinary levels of inequality. So we need to create an economy in which value created is shared far more equitably with all those who help create it. And daft though it sounds, I think it looks like a donut. Oh, yeah. The kind with a hole in the middle. So <laughs> in the hole in the middle of that donut is a place where people are falling short on life's essentials, be it food, housing, education, water, energy. And so we want to get everybody in the world out of that hole. But we also can't go beyond the donut's outer crust because there we start to put so much pressure on this extraordinary planet causing climate breakdown, biodiversity loss, air pollution, too much land conversion. We kick out of kilter this extraordinary living planet on which all of our well-being depends. Last century's economists didn't see this. No phase of humanity has encountered this before. It's our generational challenge. We need new ideas to do this. The wonderful thing about the microgrids is that they fit beautifully within the donut framework. The solar energy helps restore the outer boundaries like climate change and air pollution. But on the inner boundaries, more people are pulled into the donut by improving health with less kerosene use, education by providing light to study, income equality by keeping profits within the local economy, and networks because the microgrid now interconnects households.